Welcome to worship. Let us begin this service with our call to worship. O God, our light, if ever there were a people who need your light, it is us. If ever there was a place where hope needed to be born, it is in the manger of our hearts. The work of your hands surrounds us. The miracle of your coming confronts us. God of hope, come, be present in our worship. Amen. And we continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Lord of Israel, who comes to set us free, the mighty Savior who comes to show mercy, the dawn from on high who guides us into peace. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven. You are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Throughout Advent, we light candles to symbolize the preparations we make for the coming of Jesus. Today, we've got the Hanson girls lighting the candle on a video. Each week, you're going to see uh, new staff members' families lighting those candles. A really special thank you to the Hanson family. I invite you to please stand now as you're able and join in singing our first hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1 and 5.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving Lord, when we have strayed, you have called us to come home to you. Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. With all our hearts, we return to you and gratefully accept your gentle love. For the sake of the one whose spirit lives in us, Jesus Christ our loving Savior. Amen. You may be seated. I welcome everyone who's listening to us over the radio this morning, and for those of you who are tuned in on Facebook Live together, we are one body of Christ worshiping the Lord together. Special thanks to Pastor Lisa, who's your preacher this morning. Since we began the narrative lectionary back in September, moving from Genesis to Revelation, we've covered a whole lot of history. You saw God's people become one nation, and then you saw God's people become a divided nation, and then those divided nations were taken over by other nations. A week ago in Pastor Joe's sermon, he really recapped all the rising and falling of the kingdoms that you've heard so far. So if you missed that sermon, go back to our website so you can hear a great retelling of where we've come so far. Today, you're going to meet a prophet whose name is Joel. He writes a really short book, so if you're a confirmation student and you need to write a book of the Bible report, it might be a good one for you. It's very short. Joel comes at a time we don't know when, we don't know where exactly he is speaking. He's talking in his book about an impending invasion. He knows something's happening around in the world. But it could have been any invasion. It could have been any time in the life of God's people. And what he talks about is God will be here ready for you when you return to God. Nothing will separate you from God's love. And I wonder if when we started the narrative lectionary, you maybe had this perception of the Old Testament that God is really angry throughout all of the books of the Old Testament, that God is very violent, that God is vicious throughout the Old Testament. But what, we, what we've seen as we hop through the Bible is God is always ready with arms open for you. God is always calling us back, promising to be there when, when we come back. Uh, And finally, in Jesus, all of the promises of God and the love that never ends will be finally embodied in Jesus Christ. For now, we're going to hear a story from Joel. You can remain seated as we sing, uh, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness, and then we'll hear the reading. says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, rend your hearts, not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and relents from punishing. Then afterward I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves, in those days I will pour out my spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to take a couple breaths and sit still for a moment as we pray. 
God of new life, God of promise, let your spirit come among us, and may the peace of your presence reign in our lives. May your peace enfold us in these days we get a little too busy. Let your peace be our comfort and our guide. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hang the lights, decorate the tree, bake the cookies, send the cards, buy the gift, plan the meal. Make plans for Christmas Eve. Then make a contingency plan for, con- for Christmas Eve, and then another plan in case neither of those plans works out, because that's the story of 2020. Will you eat Christmas dinner at your house or someone else's? Will you have someone over? Will you be home alone and connect with people over the phone or Zoom? Fill the stockings, admire other people's Christmas cards, lose sleep at night wondering if the presents you bought will be considered unfair when each kid of yours watches siblings open their presents. Lose a little more sleep when you wonder how difficult it will be to return the clothes you bought for your kids because they will likely be too small or too big or too lame. Realize in the middle of the night as you continue to be awake that only you really eat those cookies you just baked. No one else likes them, but you make them every year because your grandma did. Then peek ahead in your mind to January and begin making a New Year's resolution to exercise more. Christmas can be such a production. The season is a production of preparations. You're getting your home ready, your family ready, wondering what can you prepare to make this last holiday of this weird year extra special. Extra cozy, extra delicious, extra memorable, extra, extra, more, more, more. So this morning, I have good news for you. Of course, you're rolling your eyes at me. The good news is that Christmas isn't about decorations or cookies or presents. You know the good news is that you should listen to Cindy Lou Who, as Pastor Joe mentioned last week, and not worry about all the stuff. The good news is Jesus, blah, blah, blah. And well, a sermon like that might be just fine in another time and place. For people not living in 21st century America, it might be enough to say the good news is Jesus. Amen. But for you, nothing you hear from your pastors will take the pressure off. All there is to do to prepare for Christmas Even in the years you scale it down, Christmas is a production of preparations. It's still a lot. Christmas is a heap of expectations, usually your own, and they are heavy and exhausting. All day you see and hear advertisements luring you to expect more of yourself in this holiday, more of your family, more of your partner, more of your kids. You wrap presents for others, and you wonder, can you expect something shiny under the tree waiting there for you? Can you expect something expensive, something so special you cannot even imagine how well the person who bought it knows you? You picture Christmas dinner where you will feel so loved, sitting around a cozy table with family, And the soothing voices of Harry Connick Jr. and Mariah Carey will be as satisfying as the gravy covering your potatoes. And then you soberly imagine other people opening your gifts. Will the gift you chose for that person in your family make up for the way you treated him or her these past many months? And the magic of Christmas undo the mess of your family? Or can Christmas give you more faith because it sure has been fading in this roller coaster of a year? The good news is Jesus, sure, but that's not enough to fill the stockings and the, the Christmas dinner table and make your family Christmas the perfect Christmas. The good news is Jesus, but what do you do with all the expectations and the inevitable disappointments as you prepare for the birth of our Lord? So that's the question I want to stick with you this week. 
How much honest consideration have you given lately to your own disappointments? Disappointment is an unmet expectation, a crushed hope. And yet, the season of Christmas is meant to be a season of joy, so we sweep those disappointments under the rug. And the road of unchecked disappointments built of unmet expectations and crushed hopes leads to your broken heart. And here is where you meet the prophet Joel. Joel shows up. No one knows exactly when or where, but we do know why. Joel's message is so old, older than your oldest Christmas recipe, plus in precisely 2,500 years. It's a hearty message to have lived so long. If Joel appeared today, he might tell you to put down your wrapping paper, turn off your oven, and stop making lists in your head. He would interrupt your preparations with an intermission. Disappointment, Joel would chide you. No one knows disappointment like God knows disappointment. The people whom God created in Joel's day loved God, and then they left God. Loved God, left God, loved God, left God. It was enough to break God's heart, Joel would explain to you. God gave them life and food and love, and then God's people moved about in the world wanting more, more food, more out of life, more. Joel would go on, the people looked for more anywhere they could find it, but certainly not from God. God gave them just enough. They wanted more. But what they discovered was disappointment. More was never enough. Their holidays were never perfect. Their relationships were often broken. So were their hearts. And God knew what a broken heart felt like watching the people love and leave. And God's people found their way back to the God of just enough. They arrived at the temple hungry from fasting and tear-stained and genuinely sorry. They assumed God wanted more from them, so they sacrificed animals and fasted longer and tore their clothing just to show God how sorry they really were. No, the God of just enough reminded God's own people once again, no, not more, enough. Not more, you. Just you. God did not want their sacrifices or their fasting or their torn clothing. God only wanted their broken hearts. Rend your hearts, not your clothing, God said. Rend meaning tear into two pieces. Bring me your torn heart, God tells you. Bring me your unmet expectations, your crushed hopes. Bring me your broken heart when you receive or give that gift that doesn't fix everything. Bring me your broken heart when you sit around a table with your family and you feel left out and alone. Bring me your broken heart when your faith feels inadequate. Bring me your broken heart, God tells you, broken by the long road of disappointment that accompanies human life. Bring me what is broken, God promises you, and I will put it back together and make it whole. That's what Joel would say about disappointment and broken hearts if he were in front of you right now. Under the rug is not where your disappointments and broken heart belong. Your broken heart belongs to God whose arrival into the world on Christmas Day would later fix our brokenness with the broken body of Jesus Christ. I can tell you all of this matters more than your Christmas preparations, but that will not stop you from doing too much, from expecting too much of yourself and others. There will be enough disappointments built into Christmas of 2020 to last a lifetime so, I will simply tell you, when your heart is broken by those disappointments, the Savior for, for, for whom we are waiting has already come. 
You need not prepare for his arrival. Jesus has been born and broken into our world for broken you and broken me. You need not be perfect or amazing or happy or prepared. Jesus, the good news, is here. Thank you to our choir under the direction of Cheryl Hewson, accompanied by Michael Stevenson, as they sing Once in Royal David City. Together with the whole Church of God, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it needs your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice. Speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression. And gather all people in your healing embrace. Lord, we pray especially for Rex Farspeet and Leroy Farber. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the sharing of the peace, and you're invited to stay where you're seated and share the peace with anyone in the room with a wave or a shout. Uh, you can wave at the camera too. There are people watching us online. And uh, during the peace, we're going to have another choir anthem, so thank you to the choir. The peace of Christ be with you all.
There are many ways that you are an offering, not just in this church, but in our community. We have one way that we would uh, like to encourage you to be an offering in the coming weeks, and that is for all the residents and the staff at St. Luke's Home. And so we got a video. Tina Hansen, your director of stewardship, is going to explain to you some ways that you can serve St. Luke's community this coming season. Hello and happy holidays. My name is Tina Hansen and I am the Stewardship and Trust Fund Director at St. John. And I wanted to share with you a few different ways you can show up with love for your neighbors this Advent season. So we have a lot of different things going on, but the fastest and easiest way to find um, all the things and sign up for them is to go to our website, which is stjohnelc.org. Once you get to our webpage, there's all these banners on the main screen that show the different things we have going on. So you can scroll through by clicking these little arrows on the side to find um, what you're looking for. So if you click on this blue one that talks about St. Luke's home, you can see all the different ways you can show up with love for St. Luke's. So the first way you can show up with love for this St. Luke's is by purchasing poinsettias. All the funds that we raise from Poinsettia Memorial will be going to purchase coffee gift cards for the staff at St. Luke's home. So if you'd like to purchase a poinsettia, you're gonna click on this little blue spot here in the writing where it says Poinsettia Memorial Fund. Once you click on that, it's gonna take you to a page where you can sign up and fill out a form. You put your name and your email in over here and you're gonna click on Get Started. And once you click that, it's gonna let you fill this form out where you can put in your name, your name, who you're leaving it in memory of or in honor of and how much you'd like to give. Uh, once you do that, then we will get this form back and we'll know that you wanna purchase a poinsettia. You'll have until de Tuesday, December 15th to fill out the forms and get those back to us. So that's one way to show up with love. I'm going to go back to the page here that shows the other ways. A second way is you can send a care package for the residents at St. Luke's. For these, um, you're going to have until Monday, December 21st to have them dropped off at the church. Um, if you'd like to sign up for one of these, you're going to come out here and click on this send a care package in the blue, and it's going to take you to the sign up page. On the page here, it gives you a couple ideas of things you can put in your care package. You can put whatever you want to in your care package. These are just some ideas of things that they could use. Um, if you scroll down a little further, it's going to show you that you can sign up for male, female, or gender neutral care packages. So you're going to just pick whichever one it is that you want to sign up for. So let's say I want to sign up for a male and a gender neutral one. I'm going to click on both of those, and then I'm going to come down here and click this submit and sign up in the white. And it's going to take me to the sign up page. Um, if I want to sign up for more than one of a mail care package, I can change my quantity over here to how many ever I want. And same for the gender neutral. So once I have all the right quantity in there, and I'm going to put in my name, my email, and my phone number, I will come down here to the bottom and click sign up now. And you will get a confirmation email letting you know that you've signed up. Um, you will have until again December 21st to finish your care packages. You'll want to put them in either a wrapped package or in a gift bag and drop those off at the church. So I invite you to head over to stjohnelc.org to find out more ways that you can be an offering for St. Luke's home. As we are in Advent season, but preparing for a weird Christmas, we wanted to give you a little bit of some Christmas sneak peeks as we're getting closer to the day so that we can have some opportunities to sing some Christmas hymns together. So we're going to sing verse 1 of Silent Night together now.
let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending him. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You do not have to prepare for this moment because Jesus is prepared for you. So come to this table, receive the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. All are welcome here. We were going to start on this side of the church, and so the folks over here can come up the center aisle to receive a wafer of bread and then return the side aisle, and then I'll move over to this side of the church next. If you are worshiping at home with your family, this is now the great time to distribute communion to one another. Uh, if you're communing alone, hear these words. This is the body of Christ given for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep and strengthen you in God's grace and peace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we give you thanks that in this bread and cup we have feasted again on your endless love. Let that love overflow more and more in our lives that we may be messengers to prepare your way, harvesters of justice and righteousness and bearers of your eternal word, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements before we conclude worship today. Uh, Your offering envelopes for 2021 are available and they're currently all on the tables in the fellowship hall uh, organized by your last name. So if you could run over there and grab them and save us a few stamps to mail them out, that would be great. So head on over there after worship to grab your offering envelope. Uh, We have a few things that we would like for you to participate in. Uh, for the coming Christmas. Uh, The first and probably most important is that, as you heard last week, Christmas is going to be a live stream service, and we would like you to be part of that. So one of the ways that I'd like to see you be a part of that is for you to submit a picture that can be part of a long processional uh, as as people are tuning in to prepare to watch the Christmas service. We'd love to see all your family's faces on the screen. And so it's really easy to submit a photo for uh, the Christmas service. It is the first banner on the website page. So when you open stjohnelc.org, you'll see a hinterland Christmas. Click on it, and there's a spot for you to upload a picture. I know you've got lots of pictures on your phones. I've got lots of pictures on my phone. So it's really easy. Just open it, upload a picture, so that we can include your faces in the Christmas service this year. Again, just a reminder, go also click on the St. Luke's page and find ways to serve that community too. It's been a really tough year for nursing homes, so please remember them not just in this moment, but as you're going forward as well. I think that this is the, that was the last announcement, so I will invite you to please stand now as you're able. And receive this blessing. May God direct your ways in peace, make you abound in love for one another and for all, and strengthen your hearts until the coming of our Lord Jesus. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing together our sending hymn, All Earth is Hopeful, verse 1. God.